know, some people say, you're not allowed to study Kabbalah. It's too late. It's like it's already out. The moment the book was printed, it's, it's out. People are people. And people are always looking. They're looking for something that, it's all about what's in it for me. If somebody tells you that Kabbalah makes your life better, it doesn't matter if you're religious or not, or whatever is being called religious, because I have the problem, and that's something that I, I uh, read from Rabbi Ashlai, who is authorized to decide who's religious and who's not, right? Like, what, how many mitzvot? Is there, there's a mitzvot counter to check after this amount of mitzvot you're allowed to be called religious. Or it's what you wear. I, I, I bump a lot into people that they wear the black coat and they have a long beard and all, you know, the whole thing, and they never put on tefillin. Why? Because they want their kids to get married and they don't want, they don't want to hurt the shidduch. Right? There, there are chances to get somebody from the religious community. So if somebody is dressed like it, does it mean he is religious? Or what about some religious people that are so cynical they have no belief in anything? They just do the tradition. Well, you see people, they, they don't look like religious, they don't wear anything on their head, but they observe many uh, religious laws like more than other people that call themselves religious. So, from my experience, this is very artificial. And I know Rabbi Flex said this is a political way to separate between people. Okay? So, and the other thing is, first, the first of all is people want to study Kabbalah because they are looking for a way to live their life better. So if a lot of people are studying something and they like it and they enjoy it, and there's a buzz around it, they'll go and try it also. So that's one reason people uh, want to study Kabbalah. Religious or non-religious, it's the same thing. Whatever you call them. Okay? The other thing is that people that are looking for spirituality. And they're really looking and they're trying and they're reading books about this and about that. And little by little they arrive to that place. Whoa, this is exactly what I was looking for. I hear a lot of people like this. It's the only place everything is under one roof. The reincarnation and the meditation and the cosmic wisdom and the knowledge and all this stuff. I feel I came home. That's another reason. Some people try to say, you know, you don't have to be religious to study Kabbalah. Okay, as I said, that's kind of a joke. Who, who says who's religious? Okay? But they try to, by this, I think the, the agenda behind it is that a lot of people don't want to be called religious. They don't want to be part of the dogma, as they see, belonging to a different group of what is called orthodox people, then somebody tells you what is right and what is wrong. You don't want that. So they tell you, you don't have to be religious, you can come and study whatever you want. So that's maybe a way. The point is very simple. The Zohar is speaking about life, and the Torah is speaking about life. They never separate between life and the mitzvot. It's the same, because the mitzvot, the precepts in the Torah, have to do with every aspect of your life. What is it about? It's about very simple. There are ways to do it, and there are better ways to do it, and there are even better ways to do it, which means like everything you do, you can raise a child this way, or you can start, go to take some seminars, experientials, you can read some books before you raise a child because you want to know what other people think because humanity has this issue of collecting, collecting information. So you can use other people's in experience in order to do things better. Here we're talking about information that has been accumulated for 5,000 years about how to do things in a better way. Does that mean that you, can, you have to do it that way? The first rule is no coercion in spirituality. You can't force anyone to be happy. You can't force anyone to believe in anything. And it has, when you do something, anything you do, you have to do it with all your might. And you have to understand what you're doing. So that's why even a lot of companies are saying, if you do not know Kabbalah, and you do the mitzvah, you're hurting yourself. I prefer somebody who, let's say, observe Shabbat, because the person has such an urge to grow spiritually and to become a better person 
to be able to overcome anger, frustration, negativity towards other people and to himself. And then when he, when he understands the meaning of Shabbat as a way to connect to that power, and then he observes Shabbat because of that, most probably say that's much better than somebody who observes Shabbat because he was told to. And then he even thinks he's a righteous guy. Why? He observes Shabbat. He never drives on Shabbat, but he has no desire to get anything from Shabbat because he has no desire to transform himself. He does not want to become a better person. He thinks it's okay. You know, I'm doing my uh, you know, two cents. I'm getting by. I'm doing what it says. My rabbi told me I have to do this. I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Why, you know? And the Zohar says, some people do it because they want to have a seat in heaven. Some people do it because they're afraid to get to hell. Some people do it because they're afraid they're going to be punished. Or their children are going to be punished and they're going to be punished. Some people are doing it because they're afraid that their business is going to be punished. All of these people are doing it from the wrong reason. And therefore, don't expect that they are going to do that and they're going to get some any results. The Ari said, Rabbi is a glory. And that's best also the Zohar. If you do it just because it's the tradition, the Ari says you're not going to get any uh, good from that. Because it's not going to change you. It's not going, you're not going to get from it anything. Because of not teaching Kabbalah in the yeshivot, from the beginning, to everyone, not just the special ones, this is why you're losing them. Because step by step, they study the Torah, and they become letters. Because they don't get the, the spark. So they think they do everything right. You know, they just go by the Shulchan Aruch. They just observe whatever they've been told. Do this, and everything's going to be great. And they say, so who cares for that? And then they get angry with the Creator. I did everything. Why you didn't do your side? Which was not the deal in the first place. And that's why you have to teach that from childhood. Because the guy is already doing it. So at least, you know, sometimes people say, oh, Kabbalah is such a big way. It's like, it's not for, for regular human beings. It's only for geniuses. Said, look, when you teach in the kindergarten, you know what, elementary school, you teach the Shema. And you tell the child, you know, in the Shema, there are 248 words. Each one of them is connected to one of your 248 parts of your soul, which is connected in turn to one part of your body. Okay, every time you say the Shema, just concentrate on the words because each word sends some light and healing to every part of your body and your soul. That's why you have to say the Shema. How complicated is that? You need to be a rocket scientist for that? No, but the moment you explain that, somebody, you see always people saying, wow, that's a way to teach what the Shema is about. What's wrong? You know, how much would it cost you to teach that in a religious school in, in a kid or in the kindergarten? It's so simple. They get it so easy, especially today. Why not teaching Kabbalah? So, studying Talmud without any preparation can drive you nuts. Right. I'm saying it from, from studying Talmud myself. Okay? Because many times before I studied Kabbalah, I was looking at it saying to myself, with all the respect, it doesn't look something I can really relate to. Okay? And I did not study Talmud the whole day. If you study Talmud the whole day, I met a lot of people that are yeshiva graduates and that turned them off for all their lives. While I studied more people, most of the people that do study Kabbalah at least have respect to the text, to the Talmud, and to the Torah. Maybe they got weird ideas about stuff that sounds really spooky. Still, <laughs> They didn't get so turned off as people studied Talmud without Kabbalah. After you study Kabbalah and you study the Talmud, oh, it's a totally different picture. Now you start to understand what they're talking about. Most of the Kabbalists are saying, when you do things, the problem with the mitzvah, that y y when you do the mitzvah without the consciousness, you are getting connected. The problem is if your consciousness is in the wrong place, you're getting connected to the wrong place. That's why the Talmud says, the Torah can be the nectar of life or it can become poison because it is potent, it is very powerful. And that's why you can see so many people grew up religious and they hate religion with venom, right? Well, secular people 
to simply have, you know, that interesting, no, I don't like it, but they don't have that kind of an attitude because they never, they never experience that shock. It's much easier. From my experience, and you ask a lot of people teach Kabbalah. It's much easier to teach spirituality to no, people who are not, they didn't go through the uh, religious education system than people who did go through the education system. They're more cynical, much, much harder for them to develop simple connection to light, to spirituality. They always have these this, uh, Association. associations with traumas they had as kids with me, doing the mitzvot. It's a much longer process to teach these kind of people. You know, when you look, you, you know, this mitzvah, this concept is to connect you to more happiness. That sounds much better than do that because God said so. In our generation, I don't think in any generation, but in our generation especially, it doesn't work. 